Okay, let's go ahead and get started and finish filling out our weathering concept map. So you were to use pages 278 to 283 to create a concept map that explains weathering. You started off with weathering in the top box and you had to identify two types of weathering in the connected boxes below. Write the causes of weathering where they belong in other boxes. Use the word bank to help you. Include a description and draw a picture for each cause of weathering. So to my left, you should have wrote the word chemical and to my right, you should write, write the word mechanical. What is another word for mechanical? Aaliyah. Physical, thank you. So you need to write chemical. What does chemical weathering mean? What does chemical weathering mean? Deasia. It means um, when rock is broken down by a chemical reaction. All right, broken down by chemical reaction. And so what does mechanical mean? Rayshawn. Very good. Broken down by physical means. Now, you have four boxes under chemical, five boxes under mechanical. Your word bank includes 10 words, which means that one of, the, one of your words will be used twice. So what can I put under chemical weathering? Ayana. I'm sorry, you said what, baby? Acid groundwater, very good. Bless you. What else can I put under chemical weathering? Jennifer. What else can I put under chemical weathering? <coughs> Jalen um, Allen. And then the last one, Naomi. I mean, I'm sorry, uh, Nadia. Acid and living things. Acid and living things, very good. So one key thing that all of these have in common under chemical is that it says acid, okay? So that's one key thing that we can remember. So what about mechanical? What should I put under mechanical? Jonathan, ice wedging, very good. Now there's another word we can use for ice wedging that I had on the board a while ago. What's another word for ice wedging? It started with an F. Rayshawn. Frost action. Frost action, freeze thaw, freeze thaw. Mm -hmm. What else can I put under mechanical? Camarius. Plants. Okay. What else can I put, Mr. Kennard? Animals. Animals. And Paula. Abrasion. Abrasion. Very good. And there's one more because remember I said one will be used twice. Go ahead, her son. Uh, air. air. Excellent. Okay, so now we have our words that go in each of our boxes. So the next part that we need to do is give a description of what these boxes are. So in the description, who can tell me what acid groundwater is? Mr. Allen. Glaciers that contain weak acids. I'm sorry, you said places yeah. uh, that contain weak acids? Yeah. Yeah. That happens under? Yeah. There we go. Groundwater that has weak acids. weak acids. 
Okay. So who can tell me about air? How does air affect things chemically? How does air affect it chemically? Use your notes and your books. Camarius. Well, if the air is moving it and not changing it, then that means that it's not a chemical. Remember, when we're talking about chemical weathering, we're talking about a change. Something is actually changing it. It's changing from one thing to something else. It cannot go back to its original form. Princess. The air reacts to iron. The air reacts to iron. Very good. So what happens when air reacts to iron? It causes things to rust, and that process is called what? Oxidation. Oxidation. Very good. So it causes oxidation. Which is a chemical reaction. In which an element bless you. bless you like iron combines with oxygen. to form an oxide. Okay, so what about acid rain? First of all, what's another word for rain? Another word for rain, Jennifer? Precipitation, so now we're talking about acid precipitation. So what uh, is acid precipitation as it relates to chemical weathering. Let's get some new people to answer. It's on page 281 of your textbook. What is acid precipitation? Yes. Janiah. It makes it a smell that contains a high concentration of acid. Very good. So it's rain, sleet, or snow that contains a high <coughs> concentration of acids. Okay. So what about acids in living things? What about acid in living things? Remember yesterday when we did our weathering walk, we saw uh, things on trees and rocks that actually break them down. So how does it apply in this case? It's on page 282. Zorian. Acid in living things. Okay. So things like plants. <coughs> can produce acid that can slowly break down a rock.
And the example of that was the lichens that were on the tree. Okay, so then under mechanical, we have ice wedging and freeze thaw. So what exactly is ice wedging or freeze thaw? What is that? Paula. Ice wedging and freeze thaw. Mm -hmm. Very good. So you have water that gets in between the cracks. It can be in the crack of a rock, like you see these cracks in the street. They get into these cracks, and once the water gets into the cracks, they actually freeze. When it freezes, it expands. So when water freezes, it expands. So eventually, it breaks the rock apart. And this is a repetitive motion that will keep happening. So water gets into cracks. Water gets into cracks. It freezes. <coughs> and expands. Then when it warms up, the ice melts again. <coughs> So the ice melts as the temperature increases. And this happens over and over again. So what about plants? What do plants have to do with mechanical weathering? What do the plants have to do about mechanical weathering? Keanu. I'm sorry, how do, can't, how do plants affect chemical weathering? I'm mean, sorry, physical or mechanical weathering? Okay, so the plants can grow um, and as the plant roots grow, sometimes it's strong enough to break the rock. So the plant roots grow, and forces the rock to break apart. Okay, what about animals? How do animals affect weathering? How do animals affect mechanical or physical weathering? Aaliyah. Okay, the, um, they burrow through the soil and what, sweetie? Use the soil to okay, so they burrow through the soil and move the soil particles around. And what happens is that, is that it loosens the rocks to be exposed to weathering. <laughs> 
Now, what about abrasion? Explain abrasion to me. What is abrasion? Nikea. Abrasion. What's abrasion? Are you using your notes in the book? Mm -hmm. All right, so it's the grinding and wearing away of rocks, rock surfaces. So it's the grinding and wearing away of rock surfaces. So let me give you an example of that. Um, you've seen wind before pick up leaves and it looks like a little mini tornado and it's kind of like twisting around on the ground, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so wind can pick up dirt particles and eventually if it keeps hitting up against something, it'll smooth it out, okay? So when you grind your teeth together, when you take your teeth and you grind them together, okay? So that's what it essentially is, is something rubbing up against it, okay? Rubbing up against it to smooth it out, to break the pieces down, to break off pieces. And then the last one is air. So again, like I said, with this one, the wind blows uh, sand and silt against rock and it wears away the rock surface. <coughs> So the wind blows sand and silt <coughs> against exposed rock. Wearing away at the surface. So everybody should have this down.